So we've gone through the basic recording tutorial, and now I'm going to go through the mixer section. So that's the section over to the right that has level, pan, filter, and cue. Level is how loud is it? How loud is the track? Let's just experiment with the metronome here. So I'm going to bring the metronome in so we can hear it. Okay, so we've got this little level knob. I'll circle it with my finger here. It's turned all the way down. If I bring it up, I can adjust the level of the metronome. One of the coolest things about this program is that you can actually fade in and fade out by tapping the knob. And what it will do is it will fade out from the position you're at or fade in from zero. So if I just tap it, you'll watch it slowly go away. And that's how we get rid of it. And then we can bring it back by tapping it again. And it will come right back in. So as you're performing, you can bring things in and out dynamically like that. I'll just turn this off here. If I double tap it, it turns it off. I'm going to go up into the little cog wheel in the top right corner there, and I'm going to look at knob automation time. So there's a, a number of seconds associated with that, and the lower the time, obviously, the faster that those fades will happen, and the longer the time, the longer the fades will happen. So you can really use that dynamically and, and musically to sort of set how fast you want things to come and go. Next to the level knob, so I'm going to turn on the metronome again here, make it make some noise, is pan. And essentially that just means make it go over to the left, Make it go over to the right, put it somewhere part way to the right or part way to the left. If I tap the, excuse me, if I tap the button, it goes back to the middle. So if I had a fairly quick time on that, let's make it a two second time in that menu or one and a half seconds, and I had it all the way over to the left, I tap it, and it will go back to the middle automatically, which is really neat. Now let's look at the filter. So the filter essentially is what makes the sound sound a little bit like this while you're using it. And you can use the filter. At maximum, it's basically wide open. That means let everything through. If I start rolling it off, you'll hear the sound changes. And you can go all the way through it. So you can tap that as well to bring it back. Now I've got this level set. I tap it, brings it all the way back down. I can bring it all the way back up again as well. It sounds really neat doing it that way. The Q is essentially the width of the filter. So if I make it a really wide filter, I get a lot of effect. So it's a sound you've probably heard pretty often. If I do a narrow filter, it affects a, a, a smaller range within that sound and makes it sound a little bit more sort of bassy. It's kind of neat. You could actually take the filter and maybe make a kick drum sound a little bit more bassy, like that, and then bring in your other tracks. Or I could make it really bassy if I want to. Basically bring it in. So I've got like almost like a sub kick kind of feel there, which is really neat. Bring it back up, get the other. I can fade these both out at the same time. Right, I just tapped both of them at the same time. That's a really quick look at the mixer. It's really easy to use. You can just kind of tap stuff and slide things around however you want, set up the mix, and then use it dynamically when you're doing all those other recording things that I mentioned in the uh, basics video where we can do undo and redo and all that kind of stuff. All right, take care.